So what do you think? Everything look good to you, Mr. Johnson? Great. Perfect. Can't wait to get it home. <laughs> Thanks, Al. You bet. We'll see you, huh? <laughs> you know, that's the third car I've sold that guy in the past six years. He's a satisfied customer, and we hope to keep it that way. Uh, did you see the way that new turbo coupe looked when he left? It was immaculate. The car was spotless. It was running perfect. No squeaks or rattles or, you know, anything else that might annoy the customer. And you know why that car was perfect? That customer so satisfied? Because the car was pre-delivered right. We found that the best way to get started with a new customer is with a top-notch pre-delivery. Best way to do business. Now, uh, I don't pretend to know everything there is to know about pre-delivery, but our service manager, Ken Chadwick, is an ace on the subject. Let's go see what he has to say about it. Hi, Ken. Hi, Al. Uh, what's up? Oh, Mr. Johnson just drove away in his new turbo coupe. He was a happy man. Good job on the pre-delivery. Well, thanks. I'll tell the guys back in pre-delivery that they got another customer off on the right foot. Good. You know, that's kind of what I came back here to talk to you about. Do you think that you could show us what goes into the proper delivery of a vehicle? I mean, it just seems our customers are also pleased. Just what is it you have our guys back in pre-delivery do to keep our customers so satisfied? Care. That's what really makes a good pre-delivery. And attention to detail. Look, why don't we go on back? I'll uh, show you what we do. You know, the best way to do a pre-delivery is to think of the vehicle that you're prepping as if it were your own. Then you can hardly go wrong. Well, here we are. But before we get started, why don't you come on over to the bench? There are a few things that I'd like to show you. The first is the quality commitment questionnaire. It's sent to every new owner shortly after they buy the vehicle to make sure that they're satisfied. Right here, question two. It asks the customer how satisfied they were with the dealership's preparation of the vehicle in terms of exterior appearance and cleanliness, interior appearance and cleanliness, operation of accessories, and overall satisfaction with new vehicle preparation. You know, this is just like a report card and we're getting graded by the customer. And you can believe that Ford management and dealers are looking real close at this because it's important. But hey, Ford Motor Company is not in business to try to find fault or give you trouble. They're in this business to sell cars and trucks and they'll do everything they can to help you do your job right. If you've got questions on how to do a pre-delivery, there are plenty of places to go for information. Your service manager is always a good source to turn to because he'll do his best to point you in the right direction. And experienced technicians who know their way around Ford manufactured vehicles are also an excellent source of information. Never be afraid to ask questions. Ford Motor Company, too, is a good source and they provide lots of documentation about how to do the job right. Pre-delivery isn't a simple job. If you need some help in understanding what you have to do, there are several places to turn to. First is the pre-delivery service record. It's a checklist of the major inspections that you must make while pre-delivering the vehicle. It doesn't go into detail about how to make the checks. It just allows you to keep track of what you've done and what you have yet to do. There's a specific form available for the type of vehicle that you're pre-delivering. Make sure that you have the correct form. For more detailed information, you can use the pre-delivery section of the shop manual, volume F. The section is numbered 50-02. Section 50-02 provides a much more detailed inspection procedure than the checklist. If you're unsure of how to make an inspection called for on the checklist, then go to the shop manual for specific instructions and information. Occasionally, we'll put out a special pre-delivery inspection booklet in conjunction with a new or specialty vehicle. If this is the case, make sure that you review the book completely. This will assure that you're aware of the pre-delivery inspection points that make the vehicle different from others that you may already be familiar with. Another place to look for information that a lot of pre-delivery technicians overlook is the owner's manual. This is the most authoritative source for information that you can use. If you've got questions on how something works, 
The answers are right there in the owner's manual, if you'll just take a minute to look. As you can see, there's quite a bit of reference material that you can turn to to help you perform top-notch pre-delivery inspections. But Ford offers even more to assist you in performing the pre-delivery inspection. All the fluids, lubricants, cleaners, waxes, and adhesives that you need to perform pre-delivery service are available from Ford through your parts department. Before we go any further, here are a few review questions to assure that you've picked up all the important information. Good, you're back. Let's get into an actual pre-delivery inspection. Jim Hale, one of our pre-delivery technicians, is going to help me out. He'll follow right along with a pre-delivery service record form, just as you would during a pre-delivery. We'll cover procedures performed in the stall, road test inspections, and then cleanup steps. So, let's begin with the underhood checks that would be performed right in the stall. These steps are found on the pre-delivery service record form. First, take an overall look under the hood, particularly at the emission control system, and make sure that all the vacuum hoses are connected and there are no loose electrical connections. Ken, I found a disconnected vacuum hose. To help you find where it goes, you can refer to the underhood emission control system decal. It shows the routing of the vacuum lines between components. Since the vacuum lines are normally color-coded by a tracer line, it's easy to figure out where a hose connects. In addition to vacuum hoses and electrical connections, make sure that everything is there and that there are no loose or hanging parts. Okay, after you've looked everything over, it's time to check the fluid levels. Now, I usually start with the oil and then I proceed with the other checks. There's something else you should do, too. Now, what's that? Put fender covers on so you don't scratch the finish. Yeah, I guess I did forget. We can't stress enough the care that you should take during pre-delivery. You really have to think like it's your own car that you're working on. Now, well, there we go. Now we're ready to check the underhood fluids. Okay. Start with the fluid checks that you can make with the engine shut off. These include checking the oil, which should be at the full mark on the dipstick, brake master cylinder, which should be within the minimum and maximum marks on plastic reservoirs, or within one quarter inch of the top on cast iron reservoirs, windshield and rear window washer reservoirs, which should be full, and the cooling system reservoir, which should be above the add cold mark with a cold engine, or at the full hot mark with the engine at operating temperature. If any of these fluids are even slightly low, top them off. And make sure that you use fluids that meet Ford specifications. Don't use substitutes. That's very true. You should only use fluids that meet Ford specifications. Also, while you're topping off the fluids, you want to always be making sure that everything's okay. For instance, when you take a look at the cooling system reservoir, you should also take a look at the hoses going from the reservoir and make sure that they're not kinked and that they're securely connected. And when you take a look at the brake fluid, you want to make sure that you check the gasket on the reservoir cap to see that it's in good condition and that it's properly positioned. That's a good point, Jim. One of the major parts of your pre-delivery inspection is your accurate observations. So keep your eyes open for anything that just doesn't look right. After you've checked and topped off the fluids, check the fuel line closely for any leaks, damage, or kinks. And while you're at it, make sure the fuel line doesn't come too close to any moving components that could damage it and cause a fuel leak. Look real close near the pulleys and also in the area where the fuel line passes the steering linkage. Another important check to make, especially on luxury cars, because of the high usage of electrically powered options, is battery charge. Maintenance-free batteries should have an open circuit voltage of at least 12.45 volts at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Well. That takes us through the checks you perform with the engine cold. Are you ready to show what to do with the engine warmed up? Sure. Why don't you put a hose on the exhaust and get the engine warmed up? Good. There are several underhood checks to be made that require the engine to be at operating temperature. Let's take a look at a few of them now. First, make sure that the cooling fan comes on when cooling temperature reaches the specified level for the fan to operate. Next, if the car is equipped with an automatic transmission, check automatic transmission fluid. There's a specific procedure you should follow to do this. First, with the engine at idle and the brake set, 
Move the shift lever through all the gear ranges. Next, place the shift selector in park and set the parking brake. You can now check the automatic transmission fluid. The fluid level should be between the add and the full marks. Whatever you do, don't overfill or underfill the transmission. It's designed to run with a specific amount of fluid that shouldn't go below the add mark or above the full mark. And remember, Ford uses several different transmission fluids. The type of fluid varies among transmissions. So just be sure you're adding the correct fluid for the transmission. But can't some transmissions have their fluid checked without warming them up? Sure they can. That's what the holes are for in the dipstick. But the most accurate method is with the transmission completely warmed up. Check the shop manual to determine if you can get by checking the transmission fluid level cold on the vehicle that you're inspecting. Anything else? Yes. You have to check power steering fluid level, which requires you to cycle the steering gear to its stops several times to circulate the fluid. Then shut the engine off and check the fluid level. It should be in the full hot range on the dipstick. If you've got to add fluid, use the Ford specified fluid. Also, don't ever overfill the system. Well, that completes the underhood checks, but let's review for a minute what we just went through. We checked emission control system components and electrical connectors, fluid level, fuel lines, battery charge, electric cooling fan operation, and drive belt tension. Now, let's check your knowledge of the points that we just went over. Let's get into the next part of pre-delivery inspection, body operations. During this part of the pre-delivery inspection, you install extra components and keep checking things out for proper operation and appearance. Jim? <laughs> Start out with the installation of any loose items that are usually placed in the vehicle at the assembly plant. Now these would include wheel covers, cigar lighter, luggage rack, radio antenna, anti-theft wheel lug nuts, truck exterior mirrors, or any other options or accessories. The equipment varies from vehicle to vehicle, and there are some differences that you have to be aware of. The best thing to do if you have any questions about the installation of a component is to follow the directions that are included with it. Also, make sure that you take a close look at everything you install to make sure that it wasn't damaged in shipment. Okay, now after you've got all the extras installed, take a close look at the vehicle. Check the exterior parts for alignment and fit. Make sure there are no large gaps, that the moldings are aligned properly, and that the hood and the deck lid fit nicely. Right. And after you've checked for body fit, check the latches for ease of operation. Now this includes the doors, hatchback or lift gate, and the hood. Also, check to make sure that both sets of keys work in all the doors, including the glove box door. While you're checking the operation of the deck lid or hatchback, Take a look inside. Make sure that the spare tire, the jack, and the mat are all neatly in place. Next, move to the interior of the car and take a close look at it, noting the alignment, fit, and appearance of the moldings, trim panels, carpeting, headliner, instrument panel, and other interior components. These components must fit tightly and have a nice appearance. Also, check the operation of the windows. Make sure they roll down easily without catching. If the vehicle is equipped with power windows, check all the switches to make sure they work. And the same goes for power door locks. And check all the seat belts to make sure that they're properly anchored and that they function normally. If a vehicle is equipped with a power sunroof or a convertible top, now is the time to check it for proper operation. Right. Well, that covers it for the interior checks. Let's check your knowledge of what we just went over. All right. The next thing we're going to do is check the chassis operations, which take place beneath the vehicle. Now, it isn't necessary to have a hoist for these checks, but we're using it anyway to make it easier for you to see what we're doing. Well, you can start your chassis inspection by checking or topping off the fluid levels. Now, these fluids would be the manual transmission transaxle fluid or the rear axle fluid. And if you have a four by four, then the transfer case fluid. Now, if you find you have to add fluid, 
just make sure that you use the correct fluid for the component that you're adding it to. Right. And this is especially true with axle fluids, which can vary among vehicles and applications. So be sure to check your owner's manual or shop manual to determine what you're supposed to add. After you've checked the fluid level, check the tire pressure and then adjust it to the level recommended on the decal found on either the door pillar or in the glove box. You've also got to take a close look at the steering linkage and suspension components. Now check for proper assembly, tight fasteners, cotter pins, and for the firm mounting of the steering gear. Also, make sure that there's no interference between the steering linkage and other components when the wheels are turned to their full left and right positions. Now the same things apply as you're checking the steering linkage on a front wheel drive vehicle. Plus, you should pay close attention to the amount of clearance the power steering hoses have as they pass near any moving parts, like the belts and pulleys, and also the exhaust manifold. Now there are also a few special points to be aware of, like removing shipping brackets if so equipped, or torquing the wheel nuts on trucks equipped with dual wheels and removing the spring insulators on F250 and 350 4x4 models. Oh, and don't forget to check for leaks. Right. Check the coolant hoses, transmission oil pan, engine oil pan, drive shaft, or axle CV joints on front wheel drive vehicles, axle housing, fuel tank, and automatic transmission cooler lines. Also, trace the fuel line to make sure it's not kinked or too close to any hot or moving components. Right. Well, that covers chassis operations. But before we go on to the road test, let's make sure that you picked up the important points to check for on the chassis. Well, we've checked the vehicle over quite thoroughly, and we're ready for the road test operations, which are some of the most important checks of all. That's right. It's really your chance to evaluate the vehicle under actual conditions to assure that it will satisfy the new car buyer. Right. You've got to plan your road test to put the vehicle through a variety of situations and road conditions, including rough, curved, and straight roads, along with expressway or open highway conditions. During your test, make several stops and starts to check braking and engine operation. Also, listen carefully for any signs of squeaks or rattles. Now, these must be repaired before the car can be delivered to the customer. But, you know, the road test really starts in the stall. You can start your test by checking the operation of the ignition lock, along with the warning chime, which should go on when the door is open with the key in the ignition switch. Next, if the car is equipped with an automatic transmission or transaxle, check the neutral safety switch. If it's operating correctly, the vehicle should start only in park or neutral. On manual transmission vehicles, make sure that the engine starts only when the clutch is pushed in. Next, it's time to check the operation of the major components. Make sure that the horn blows, lights come on, including headlights, tail lights, turn signals, brake lights, courtesy lights, dome light, instrument panel warning lights, and fog lights. Windshield wipers operate, the washers squirt, hazard flashers operate, and the instruments function. Before you start to drive the car, check the throttle operation by working the linkage from inside the car and under the hood to make sure there's no sticking or binding and that the engine returns to curb idle. Also, if the vehicle is equipped with a carburetor, make sure the choke linkage moves freely and operates properly. You've also got to check out the climate control system. All the controls have to function normally to vary temperature and blower speed and to direct air discharge to the proper register. If the vehicle is equipped with air conditioning, check the outlet temperature from the registers to assure proper cooling. And don't forget to check the radio operation and be sure to set the clock. That's right. And if you have any questions on how to operate the radio, the tape player, or the digital audio disc player, just check the owner's manual. Okay, well, the seatbelt warning system works, parking brake works, well, I guess I'm ready to do the test drive now. Great. Okay, now Jim will be making several checks during the test drive. First, he'll check the brakes out several times to make sure they apply evenly without pulling. Then, he'll make sure that the steering system works properly. The three qualities you should be looking for here are no tendency to wander, 
the vehicle holds steady on the turn, and there should be no undue vibration that would indicate a tire imbalance. The idea in your test drive is to check the drivability of the vehicle. The engine should start easily and run smoothly. The transmission should upshift and downshift normally, and the suspension and steering should perform as expected. Any deviation from normal should be diagnosed and repaired before delivery to the customer. Also, if the vehicle is equipped with a speed control, try it out and make sure it holds its set speed, releases by a touch of the brakes, clutch, or the off button, and reacts properly to the resume and excel functions. Also, try the vehicle out on a bumpy road and listen for any squeaks or rattles. And also, listen for any signs of wind noise. Okay, that'll give us time to ask a few questions before we go through the appearance operations. Well, the last thing that we've got to do is go through the appearance operations. And I can't stress enough how important this is because the new owner expects a clean, sparkling new vehicle when it's picked up. And we can't disappoint him here. Appearance operations begin with a thorough washing of the vehicle and a detailed cleanup on both the interior and the exterior. Now, a detailed cleanup means a close look at everything. I like to use Ford Multipurpose Cleaner because it works on just about everything on the interior and the exterior, everything from headliners to tires. It's a good idea. And make sure that you remove any excess adhesive not removed by washing. Some of the places to look closely are around the edges of vinyl roofs, seals at windows or doors, and at the windshield and rear window seals. You've also got to go over the entire body and search for any imperfections in the paint and metal finish. Send any major problems you might find to the body shop. But for minor paint blemishes, you can use a brush, aerosol can, or just a little bit of polish. With all that done, you can remove the plastic covers from the seats and any other protective covers from over the carpeting. And make sure that there's no dirt or smudges on the upholstery and that all small tag ends from the plastic are removed. This must be done thoroughly and carefully. And when you've got everything clean and ready to go, wipe the steering wheel to make sure that there's no grease or smudges. Then take a moment and look over your work. Make sure that the vehicle's ready to meet its new owner. Now it's time to show your pride in workmanship by signing and inserting the QCP tag on the rearview mirror. Also, sign the completed pre-delivery service record and then turn it into your service manager. Well, that completes the pre-delivery on this car. So let's take a moment to ask you a few questions about what we've just gone over. Before we finish, I'd like to make a few points to you. As you already know, Ford Motor Company sells a wide variety of vehicles, and the pre-delivery inspection procedure varies among them. Specialty vehicles like the Econoline school buses have specialized pre-delivery inspections that are much more detailed. Also, our import vehicles and specialty vehicles like 4x4s may have some pre-delivery or road test features that are slightly different from those of domestic or non-specialty vehicles. And for that reason, it's important to always be familiar with the pre-delivery instructions in the shop manual. Also, always follow the pre-delivery service record check sheet to assure that you've made every check. But the biggest factor is you. Remember, pride in workmanship has got to show in every vehicle you pre-deliver. You're the key to customer satisfaction and one of the most important links between Ford Motor Company and its customers. Thank you.